On an aircraft carrier used by the U.S. Navy, 5,000 sailors can live and work. Cooks on board are required to feed everyone. Food is the most important part of a sailor's life, as it provides the energy to survive the rough conditions posed by the sea. Did you know that during their lengthy missions at sea, sailors catch their own fish to eat? Like and subscribe to our channel as we explore the U.S. Navy's culinary division. Many sailors in the U.S. Navy enjoy going out to sea to fish. These individuals put in a lot of effort to protect American interests abroad, and in their spare time, many of them appreciate the tranquil settings and the challenge of hauling in a sizable catch. But what do each country's Navy sailors eat? Whatever Navy diet you choose, you'll see a pattern where items with a lot of fat, sugar, or sodium are typically quite restricted. This is so that the Navy may prioritize long-term health advantages and nutritional worth above the quick-fix calories that fast food dishes offer. Both British and U.S. Navy forces have their ways of feeding the sailors. In the case of the British Navy, they try to make their meals from a variety of ingredients, but it gives particular weight to some requirements. The Ministry of Defense, as quoted by The Guardian, claims that the recommended diet is based on the principles of nutritional necessity, appeal, ethics, and sustainability. The British Navy strives to utilize British sources whenever practicable and advantageously. The feedback on the cuisine is typically very excellent, and a typical breakfast is substantial or wholesome. On a typical day, the catering staff on a military ship serves breakfast to the crew before moving on to lunch, supper, and serving drinks to the officers. In case a significant individual, such as a member of the royal family is aboard the ship, they are provided with VIP meals, which the catering staff are trained to do. Similar to the British Navy, the U.S. Navy prioritizes the health and happiness of its diners, but there are also stringent rules on food consumption based on tasks and circumstances. For instance, diets in sweltering heat steer clear of fat and an abundance of protein, because these food types are known to reduce heat tolerance. In contrast, whole grains and nuts are the meal of the day in cold areas, because they are rich in the vitamin thiamine, which helps with energy metabolism. In the event that eating too much protein or fat causes stomach discomfort and subsequent water loss, these foods are still avoided in extremely cold temperatures, because protein consumption increases fluid loss and can ultimately result in dehydration. It is also rigorously controlled during high-altitude operations. Being a cook on a Navy ship entails a lot of responsibilities. It's crucial that the food is adequate or the rest of the crew will suffer. Additionally, it's a demanding job that occasionally involves 16-hour shifts. Smaller ships are likely to have smaller staff, and the weather may affect the meals. For instance, certain cooking tasks might not be safe to perform on a ship at sea. Regardless of the food offered in the mess hall, these areas must remain orderly and clean to preserve your crew's health and morale. So, can sailors fish for tasty food every day? No, on a Navy ship. Fishing is normally only permitted when the crew has some downtime and the ship is not involved in military activities. The officers of the ship meticulously plan and oversee the fishing operations because everyone's safety is always the first priority. For recreational fishing, the majority of Navy ships are outfitted with rods, reels, and tackle. Some sailors carry their own equipment with them. The type of fishing that sailors can engage in depends on where they are in the world because different fish species can be found there. Navy sailors frequently catch mahi-mahi, marlin, and tuna, among other species. Some sailors prefer fly fishing or casting from the deck, in addition to more conventional fishing techniques like trolling or jigging. Even while at sea, some sailors practice catch-and-release fishing or spearfishing. But is this the only way sailors can get food supply in the deep sea? No, the U.S. Navy has a division known as the Naval Fleet Auxiliary Force or NFAF, the 42 ships of the Naval Fleet Auxiliary Force of the Military Seal of Command serve as the supply lines for American Navy ships at sea. These ships provide nearly all of the gasoline, food, ammunition, replacement parts, mail, and other supplies that Navy ships require. Thanks to the NFAF ships, the Navy fleet can spend more time at sea, being stationed, and combat ready. Additionally, NFAF ships do towing, rescue, and salvage missions, as well as act as floating medical centers. Government employees who work as mariners in the civil service manage all NFAF vessels. For operations support, supply coordination, and helicopter operations, some of the ships also have a limited number of Navy personnel on board. But what about the kitchen inside a U.S. Navy submarine? A U.S. Navy submariner's life is challenging. 
While traveling through frigid waters in a steel tube for months, these sailors are surrounded by explosives, combustible materials, and even nuclear weapons. They are susceptible to horrible accidents even in times of peace. During a conflict, they run the risk of being pursued and destroyed by hostile ships and helicopters. But they famously eat very well. Let's take an example of the food service in the galley of the USS Jefferson City submarine. The entry is down a ladder that drops 20 feet into the hull of bustling activity. Each of the 130 guys working on this 360-foot-long, 33-foot broad ship is focused on their assigned assignment. While some congregate around a workstation, others are constantly moving through doorways and along tunnels, standing tall to the side to let someone pass. The group works rapidly and faithfully and adheres to a schedule. An efficient military submarine commands respect. The crew as a whole is fed by a six-person staff. In total, this team produces four large dinners in a day that lasts 18 hours. The cooking is done by just two people, one during the day and one at night. It is obvious why, while standing in the kitchen, this tiny area, which is only 10 feet by 14 feet, is devoid of any high-tech or glitzy features other than the military-grade sheen on the stainless steel that extends from the floor to the ceiling. The sole appliances are two side-by-side -side convection ovens, a microwave, a deep fryer, two enormous soup pots, and an industrial-sized mixer. Any remaining space is occupied by a little sink, sanitizer, cabinets, and drawers. The wide selection of bulk spices is within easy reach of the dog-eared recipe cards placed at eye level. Whatever luxuries the galley lacks, this tea makes up for in productivity and style. We can say that the storage of food takes up lots of space, but the U.S. Navy has come up with a technology to tackle this problem. The Defense Logistics Agency Troop Support Subsistence Supply Chain began providing support to U.S. Navy culinary specialists assigned to submarines in its first-ever freeze-dried food pilot program. NASA claims that in order to freeze-dry food, it must go through a process that removes water through a vacuum in order to prevent spoilage while maintaining the majority of the flavor, color, and texture indefinitely. This makes the food very light and compact, and it eliminates the need for refrigeration. The Navy values the fact that freeze-dried food takes up less space on a submarine than anything else. The freeze-dried foods have nutritional content that is on par with or better than dehydrated goods that the Navy has previously employed. Let's now talk about how a Navy ship worked before the time of refrigeration. They relied on the age-old practice of salting food to preserve it. By removing water from the food and preventing bacteria from developing and ruining it, salting preserves food. Both dry curing and wet curing are ways of salting. In the dry curing procedure, the food is covered in salt and kept in a cool, dry environment. It could be essential to empty off the accumulated liquid since water will be pulled out into the salt. In wet curing, a brine is made by dissolving salt and water, after which the food is added and stored in a cool, dry environment. Spices, such as juniper berries or peppercorns, can be added to the brine to give the dish fresh flavors. Although some people do not like the flavor of salted meals, depending on how much salt is used, the food may last for a few months to several years. Because salted food is so salty, it may need to be reconstituted in order to add water and reduce the salt content. But for sailors, fishing at sea may be a rewarding and fun activity. The opportunity to unwind and take in the majesty of the ocean is provided, and the excitement of the catch can serve as a welcome diversion from the pressures of life at sea. Would you be able to survive in a ship or submarine with these types of food? Let us know in the comments. Like and subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to be a part of our voyage.